Good morning and welcome again to another edition of One God 16 in conjunction with Speak Your Mind Radio. And I'd like to uh, go ahead and touch basis this morning a little bit on yesterday's devotional reading uh, where we um, was not able to actually do a show. Um, so this is actually our first show today. It's Monday morning, um, February 16th. And today we're going to be, first we're going to touch a little bit on um, Luke chapter 1 verse 37 and also <clears throat> Ephesians 3 chapter 3 verse 20, 20 to 21 and Psalm 23 1 through 4. And now I let, we have our co-host here Jackie from Beaverton, all the way from Beaverton, Oregon, and I'm broadcasting here in Groveton, New Hampshire, so we are 3,000 miles apart here. I'm glad that I can get this message this morning across, all the way across, and uh, you can also follow us on Facebook at facebook.com, S-Y-M Radio Show, and also you can uh, follow us on, on Google Plus and on YouTube at One God 16 So now I'm going to go ahead and bring in my co-host, Jackie. Go ahead, Jackie. Come to me with all your weaknesses, physical, emotional, and spiritual. Rest in the comfort of my presence, remembering that nothing is impossible with me. Pry your mind away from your problems so you can focus your attention on me. Recall that I am able to do immeasurably more than all you ask or imagine. Instead of trying to direct me to do this and that, seek to attune yourself to what I am already doing. When anxiety attempts to wedge its way into your thoughts, remind yourself that I am your shepherd. The bottom line is that I am taking care of you. Therefore, you need it be worried. You need it be afraid of anything, rather than trying to maintain control over your life. Abandon yourself to my will, though this may feel frightening, even dangerous. The safest place to be is in my will. Hey Amen. That is, that that is actually true. <laughs> yes, and um, the reason why I actually uh, picked this this today, um, and well for yesterday too, is because I mean there is like I say there is a lot of things that's going on in this world and in our lives, um, and I mean uh, which we're going to be talking about and uh, the broadcast that we we're supposed to be doing yesterday, and that was um, all the things that's going on in the world, like with ISIS. We had an ISIS discussion, and we also had a discussion on Isaiah 53, verses 1 through 6. And you'll be, that will be coming up next after uh, this uh, short, brief description of what we're actually um, talking about today. And uh, um, we want to touch a little bit here on what it says on Luke chapter 1, verse 37. Uh, for nothing is impossible with God. Uh, That's my favorite verse. Yes, yes, yes it is. And, I mean, uh, I'm, I want to go back and touch a little bit about yesterday. And, and I wish that, that I was able to actually do this because uh, <laughs> I was having a lot of issues yesterday. Um, of course, with the, uh, yeah. Yeah, with uh, with everything, and um, when I read when after I got off the um, off uh, the phone with you last night, you know, I, I read back and I read this, you know, because I had to I had to read because I try to put it in my life every day to read something, and actually, um, this this what we are reading from it's called Jesus is Calling, uh, and uh, it is a devotional book, and it's really good and. Actually downloaded it on on my tablet, the uh, Kindle version, and I'm going to be reading a lot more today. And I'm going to get done here. Um, but it says here in Ephesians uh, 31, th uh, Ephesians 3, chapter excuse me, chapter 3, verse 
20 to 21, it says, Know to him who is able to do and measure more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work in us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. And, and of course, Psalm 23, everybody knows this one, which I like this because I always try to go back to read this. I'm having troubles and uh, anxiety. And that is, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness His name, and for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And they're, like I say, we're talking, uh, there is a lot of evil in this world. I'd be like you take with what happened back on the 3rd of this month uh, with uh, that um, Jordanian pilot being burnt alive. And that's what we'll be talking about uh, in our... Uh, upcoming uh, broadcast that you're going to be hearing. This is a pre-recorded broadcast, actually, that you'll be listening to. I was hoping to make it live yesterday, but through technical issues and whatnot, we could not do that. So, Jackie, did you want to touch a little bit on this, too? I mean, uh, based on how... Uh, um, all I was going to say is that uh, this... And the Jesus calling thing really fits me because I've been having a lot of anxiety and, and stress. So I just, um, but I, so that's the thing. And I mean, you know, Jack, you know, when the anxiety that you that you experience, the anxiety that I do too, when the, like it says here, when, when, when anxiety at, attempts to wedge its way into your thoughts, remind yourself that I am your shepherd. Well, and the bot, you know, and it says the bottom line is that I am taking care of you. And he is, Jackie. He's taking care of you. <clears throat> he is. I mean, and I feel in my life too at times when I have a lot of, you know, anxiety. When I start the anxiety, um, you know, I feel that at times that I am being taken advantage of by somebody, and that bothers me. But. See, see, the bottom line is, is he is taking care of me, um, and I needn't be afraid of anything. Uh, you take, for example, like a, in, our, in our last pre-record broadcast, you know, I said that, that you know when I watched that video of that Jordanian pilot being burned alive. That's sad. Yeah. That's what the world's going to. The world's going to that, and um, yeah. But we have to, like I said. But like I said, um, in in that broadcast uh, is, we we'll have to take the things that you know the negative things in our lives. I mean, the more that you take positive things, put positive things into your life, and that is by reading the Word of God, and reading the daily scriptures, and and I think it also helps me too by when doing this show too, because um, it's positive. And the more positive stuff that you put in your life, the less negative that you're going to see. And um, well, we'll definitely have to include that in in our our prayer this morning before we uh, end this. Um, and I want to touch in on today's uh, devotional reading. Uh, and uh, that is actually, uh, Jackie, it's on page 49 of the uh, Jesus is Calling. And um, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll read that. And then we can touch on, on uh, the uh, scriptures. Um, it says, uh, thank me for the conditions that are requiring you to be still. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Um me trying to being still that's what I need to be is be still do not spoil these quiet hours by wishing them away waiting impatiently to be active again some of the greatest works in my kingdom have been done from sick beds and prison cells instead of resenting limitations of a weakened body 
search for my way in the midst of these very circumstances. Limitations can be liber liberating when your strongest desire is living close to me. Quietness and trust enhance your awareness of my presence with you. Do not despise these simple ways of serving me. Although you feel cut off from the activity of the world, your quiet trust makes a powerful statement in spiritual realms. My strength and power show themselves most effective in weakness. And it says in Zechariah 2 verse 13, Be still before the Lord, all mankind, because he has aroused himself from his holy dwelling. And this is what the sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel says in repentance and rest is your, 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 hold on, rest is, and rest is yours. But he said to me, my grace, my favor and loving kindness and mercy is enough for you. Sufficient against any danger and enables you to bear the trouble man, man fully. For my strength and power are made perfect, fulfilled and completed. And show themselves more most effective in your weakness. Therefore, I will all the more godly, godly glory in my weakness and infirmities. That the strength and power of Christ the Messiah may rest, yes, may pitch a tent over a dwell, over, may pitch a tent over and dwell upon me. And that is in Second Corinthians 12, verse 9. Um, what does this all say to you, Jackie? I don't know how to put it in the words, honestly. Okay. All I know is, is, uh, uh, All I know is is God likes a quiet soul. Yes, He does. And um, he he doesn't he doesn't do well with people sinning. Um, he loves everybody, but he, he he sometimes I think he gets really disappointed in how this world is turning out. Mm -hmm. His face yes. at this world. Yeah. Anyway. Um, we can actually, uh, if you what, want to go. What do you think? Well, yeah, I mean, it, we do have to be still. I mean, he, he, he does like a quiet soul because when we're not still, you see, limitations can be liberated. Strongest desire is living close to me. That's what I basically want, want to say. I don't know how to put it all in context. Um, but that's what I just want to say is, you know, by living close to him and being quiet and having trust, okay, then things will all work out. You, uh, you want me to read uh, Second Corinthians nine twelve? Yeah. Second Corinthians chapter twelve verse nine. Yeah. It's a good verse. Yeah. Go ahead. But he said to me, "My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power." They rest on me. So if we're if we're feeling anxiety and and like exhausted, you know, you just you just pray to God um, and you and you ask Him to come into your life and to give you peace within your heart. Yes. Um, that's that's. Perfectly put, Jackie. Perfectly put as to what I wanted to say. I just didn't know how to put it into words or context. So that was very good. Thank you. You know, um, 
can I read uh, chapter 10 of this? Because it kind of, yeah. I, I kind of like what it has to say. Yep. Yeah. Please underline it. Um, I do like, that is why, for Christ's sake, I do like in weaknesses, in, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and you know, I'll tell you something. People t say, "Say, oh, I'm, I'm strong." Well, you know what? If if a person always says that they're strong, then they don't need God, right? But without God, you're you're weak. Yeah. You're always weak. You always need God to make you strong. Yes. Um, but I just um, I just kind of worry a lot. <laughs> I get yeah. concerned. Mm -hmm. I get concerned because I I know myself that I need God in my life, especially with what I'm going so, through. Anyway, and then I notice there is another. Oh, good. There's two Old Testament ones. I I'm liking the Old Testament. Okay. All right. I've never what read that in Zechariah. Zechariah. Yeah. Chapter two, okay. verse thirteen. All right. Hold on one second. Let me open up. Uh, Zechariah. <laughs> and I have to I have to find my glass my glasses here because this is small print. Oh no. <laughs> Part of getting older. Yeah, I know. That's one thing you have to uh, deal with. Let me get some light on the situation. There we go. <coughs> okay. Verse 13. Okay, hold on. Yep. I'm, I'm there. Chapter 2, verse 13. It's a good one. You um, can read it. Uh, this is what it says in mine, and I, I'm reading from the uh, NIV. Me too. Okay. Um, it says here, be still before the Lord, all mankind, because he has aroused himself from his holy dwelling. Do you know what that means? He's being in, um, he's saying that he, he's gonna bring, he wants to bring peace to you. And by, by um, living in him and being still, and having the faith, along will come the peace. Because you have to let them work. You have to let them work in your life. You can't let let things bother you. And you have to keep. It's 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 almost like just sitting sitting in a room and just being quiet and. Meditating, sort of like that. You know what I'm saying? That's a quiet soul. It's being still. Yeah. Don't let, let you know. Don't let the other other things in the world um, bother you or consume consume your soul or your life. And then, as you have God in your life, that's actually very hard to do. Yes, exactly. And it is. That's what he's. This is saying. Is is to um, uh, be still and let God work. <clears throat> okay. Um, Isaiah thirty fifteen. This is what the Sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel, says: In repentance. Re and rest is your salvation in quietness and trust is your strength and you would have none of it and I think what's that saying is um, with quietness and strength trust in your strength mm -hmm. because without any of that you would be kind of running around. 
really scared and and um, letting 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 Satan get to you and and whisper to you and everything else and um, but if you if you if you read the scriptures and and you pray then it keeps him away and it keeps peace in, in your in your life um, and staying away from people that that kind of um, kind of make things rough for you mm -hmm. I think that's what that means yeah yeah that you have to stay yeah, strong yeah. stay strong yes and uh, okay um, so um, we'll go ahead uh, and uh, see that was another thing. It was that it was that it says here. It says woe to the obstinate nation. Uh, what does obstinate mean? Obstinate. Yeah. I I know what that means. Obstinate. Um. Because that's the first time I've ever heard of, I've ever heard of that no, word. No, I know what it means, but let me double check. Hold on for a second. Yeah. yeah. Hold on. And then while you're doing that, we'll I'll, um get ready for that for the next. I think it means stubborn, but let me see. Obstinate, you say? Um, yeah, yeah. Let me um, let me spell it up for you. I knew that's what that meant. No, I know, I knew it. it oh, you it, got it? it? Yes, it's an objective, and and I knew it meant stubborn. <laughs> it okay. means stubborn, unyielding, inflexible, unbending, intransigent, intractable. Obdurate, mullish, bullheaded, pig-headed, self-willed, strong-willed, headstrong, willful, con contrary, perverse, uh, recalculatrant, refractory, uncooperative, unmanageable, stiff-necked, rigid, compromising, implacable, unrelenting, Immovable, unshakable, and more. <laughs> and and, and <laughs> persist, uh, on, right? unshakable, persistent, tenacious, pertinacious, dog, single-minded. Ah, those are, it means a lot. It, basically, you know what? It just means uh, basically stubborn. When someone's being stubborn, they're being obstinate. I kind of knew that. I wanted to double check that, and I was right. Yay! Yeah, Yay, I yeah. knew that. I kind of. Well, yeah. Why? Oh no! Uh, uh, like assuming because that's the last one we read. That's what it says in the heading, um, and it was talking about the obstinate nations. I couldn't quite read what that said. Oh, just prayer concerns. Oh, prayer concern. Okay. I was going to, I was going to um, kind of mute this and ask ask uh, somebody if they wanted me to pray for him. Yeah. Like Alicia's mom. So, so I'm, I'm going to mute this. Okay. Uh, yep. yep. Um, okay. So I want to actually go to something here. Um, it is actually, it was. <laughs> Uh, that we maybe I wanted to be on the lookout for. This is a parental kidnapping, and I've been following this. And uh, actually, I uh, had posted on uh, my Facebook uh, and also on Speak Your Mind Radio's Facebook page on um, the uh, Be on the Lookout. So I'm going to go ahead and try to play that here, and then we'll go into prayer. Our next story is uh, there is a be on the lookout for a Ferguson family out of Texas. Um, 
first uh, Pamela Stringer Ferguson, uh, who is a wanted fugitive uh, in, for felony interference with child custody. Uh, Pamela Stringer Ferguson is the mother of wanted fugitive Miranda Ferguson. She is traveling in a gray Toyota 4Runner Tex with Texas plates DLJ9990. But later on in the uh, week, they found out that uh, um, those uh, that plate uh, did not match uh, with the vehicle. They switched to vehicles. Pamela is known to be paying for hotel rooms in cash and is known to be spending nights in hotel rooms off of major highways in small towns. Investigators are asking anyone in the East Texas area and hotels in these areas to be on alert. If seen, do not make contact or try to apprehend. Please call the U.S. Marshals Fugitive Task Force, your local 911 service. Anonymous tips can be sent to Klein Investigations at 409-729-8798, extension 6. Now, the person who is, has been abducted is Riley Ferguson. She's 7 years old, 48 pounds. You see here in this picture, hair is color is dark blonde, is uh, in her... Now, this girl is in her is in uh, Pamela Stringer Ferguson's possession, along with wanted, wanted fugitive Miranda Ferguson. Now, yesterday, um, February 13th, uh, I'm going to read a post from Klein Investigations and Consulting on Facebook. They say, investigators involved in the hunt for fugitive Miranda Ferguson have been advised this morning that the charges against Ms. Ferguson have been elevated to aggravated kidnapping. This charge now brings uh, in further resources in the fugitive hunt for Ms. Ferguson. Texas Department of Public Safety has now elevated the be on the lookouts on Miranda, her mother, Pam, sister Sue, and her partner Donna Nash. Further, a case has now been opened against Sue Ferguson and Donna Nash with possible charges being filed in the next few days. We are urging anyone with knowledge of their whereabouts to contact the U.S. Marshal Service hotline or the local police, sher police or sheriff's department or client investigations and consulting. Now, on um, February 11th at um, around 11.06 a.m., investigators with uh, client investigations and consulting and Texas and the uh, Madison County Sheriff's Office located a wanted vehicle you see here in connection with the kidnapping of Riley Ferguson investigators were able to confirm the identity of the vehicle however the vehicle's license plate was registered to a truck owned by Donna Nash the auto was lo the auto was located near Madison Madisonville Texas and has been impounded with a search warrant pending so they are switching vehicles and um, I'm going to play uh, a news report here from Channel 12 and the interview explaining the whole story. Jasper could be one step closer to tracking down this fugitive mom who is still on the run tonight with her seven-year-old daughter. That's because the fugitive's father was arrested today. But there may be a problem. Within the last hour, sources told 12 News, 57-year-old Dylan Ferguson is not cooperating with the investigation. He is charged with interference with child custody in connection with his 7-year-old granddaughter. The little girl and her mother, Miranda Ferguson, have been missing for more than a month. Miranda Ferguson failed to return her daughter to the child's father following a week of visitation. The man arrested, who is Miranda's father, was taken into custody at his job in Port Arthur. He's awaiting extradition back to Jasper County. Miranda Ferguson and her attorneys accused the little girl's father of abusing the child. But three Jasper County judges have sided with the girl's father, awarding him custody. Okay. Mr. Ratcliffe, you heard the news conference. Uh, your response? Uh, a lie is a lie is a lie. January of last year, uh, the Fergusons themselves, Mr. and Mrs. Ferguson, filed criminal charges against their own daughter, alleging that she had stolen checks from them, forged names, she was on methamphetamine, had been put in jail in 2013, and now in 2000, 
13, December the 26th, she's in jail for forgery of checks off of Mr. and Mrs. Ferguson. While she's in jail, the day after Christmas on 2013, she signs this three-page handwritten statement saying her father has sexually molested her while in bed with the child. Uh, that leads to January of last year, a little more than 13 months ago, we had a full-fledged temporary hearing wherein her own parents were seeking custody of Riley against her. In front of Judge Owens, all of the evidence was brought out. Judge Owens said custody to Josh Felder, primary custody, and joint managing conservatorship I will say that only one parent can establish the primary residence of the child and the other parent ends up with visitation rights and child support. And that's what ended up with Miranda after the temporary hearing, January the 31st. She had supervised visitations, court-ordered uh, drug testing, of which February the next month came back positive for methamphetamine. She was arrested in March in Jasper for possession of controlled substance and methamphetamine. Uh, we tried the case and the grant that her own parents are going against her and we end up having a trial in front of Judge Mixon for a jury. At that point in July, the grandparents, Mr. and Mrs. Ferguson, apparently they kiss and make up, they dismiss the charges against their daughter and they drop the lawsuit against her, but that left Josh and Miranda. She in the meantime hires a lawyer Keith Stanley to represent her. We set it for trial, tried August 8th in front of Judge Mixon all day. All the evidence, pictures, anything that they want to bring out, home studies brought out. At the conclusion of that hearing, Judge Mixon, primary custody to Josh Felder. Mother supervised visitations in the home of the, of the Fergusons. Okay, child support, continued drug testing on a weekly basis. the child the judge had previously held her in contempt of court and confined her to the county jail for 60 days and probated that for one year provided that she would obey the court order concerning returning the child okay here we go we're, we're coming up to the end of the year she hires another lawyer mr. Kirsch here who immediately files in September or October some protective order saying the child's being abused and an emergency motion to modify and brings in his expert from Bryan College Station, the one he's bragged about here, and he testified live. Now we've got a new judge involved, Judge Joe Bob Golden, who has been assigned to the case and has, has assigned to it right now. After hearing two days of testimony, March, uh, November the 10th, uh, November the 21st, judge said motions denied. Custody still with Josh. Christmas rolls around. She gets the child December the 28th for Christmas, for the Christmas holidays, the second half of the Christmas holidays. We have yet to see her since then. That child has now missed four weeks of school. This semester has been out of school and I hope this little seven-year-old will pass the seventh grade. And she's on the run. She, Josh has primary custody. If you keep the child beyond a period of time when you're entitled to possession, then that becomes a felony in the state of Texas called interference with child custody. If you are aware of the court order, as the Fergusons are, they were supervising the visitations, then they're an accomplice to that. Now we have warrants for Miranda's arrest, for the Fergusons' arrest. We have no idea where this child is, and we hear of a news conference down here at the federal building in Jefferson County it could have been at Jasper County Courthouse, but it's at the federal building in Jefferson County. We're wanting to know where Miranda is, where the child is, when this child will be returned back to the father who has custody, and uh, all of this, all of the evidence, we've tried it now three times, and the final time we're trying it is out here on the federal courthouse steps and the public media, and here we go for a big song and dance out here. So. And you didn't I'm sorry that. if I kind of vented a little bit.
And you didn't get the answer you wanted? No. Where's Miranda? Where's Miranda? Where is the child? We have a writ of attachment sitting in a sheriff's car ready to pick that child up, return that child back to the father. We have warrants for arrest. We have papers to revoke her probation to serve on her. We have motions for contempt. And most likely, you're going to file a petition to terminate her parental rights. Now, if anybody's worked a mind game on this child, this child is interviewed by the Garth House here in Jefferson County renowned for its forensic evaluations of minor child. They come back and say, well, the little girl said that her dad made her mother wear orange jumpsuits and eat beans in jail. Well, that's not true. The only time she'd been in jail was on her own drug charges or her parents. The child says, daddy has stolen my, uh, me from my mother for 241 days at the Garth house. Count from the Garth house and go back to when we filed this motion in January, 241 days. Now you tell me where that child got that information. And there's no question that there has been some manipulation and mind games played on this child. And, and I'm afraid that it's all coming over here. And for the last four weeks, this child has been with the mother and no telling what that child has, was, what has been told and done and the mind games played on it. And uh, uh, I welcome I welcome to find out where Miranda is, where that child is. I welcome them to come back to court and to try this case. I'm just waiting for it. What do you make of the deal situation with how they describe the guard house as being on uh, a Jasper County funded by? I, I, I'm offended. I'm offended by that because the guard house is used by Jefferson County, Orange County, Hardin County, Jasper County, all surrounding counties in this area, and they do an excellent job over here, and I'm thankful for it and they provide a forensic evaluation of a child who is under 12 years of age to determine if there's any credibility of what the child is saying concerning an house crime. In this case, none. No credibility of a child. They ruled it out, and I'm kind of offended by their allegations about the North House, personally. And the description of Josh Gilder as far as from phone records, and what are your thoughts on, on that? Your phone records are one thing. Did the child, you know, if you work at a plant and some guy sends you a picture, that you didn't ask for, you didn't want it, and all of a sudden it's on your phone, you delete it, but then maybe there's a trail somewhere down the road, okay? That child never had access to anything of this nature, would not. Josh doesn't drink, he doesn't smoke, he goes to church, he works, and he always exercises visitation, and he wants what's best for his little girl, and that's to be a normal, happy child. Right now I got a kid who's probably on the run with the mother, not in school, uh, I hope she can pass the second grade because beginning of the school year in August of last year, she held her out two weeks at the beginning of the year and was on the run and we had to get a rid of attachment to pick up the child then. So it, it's, it's getting ridiculous. Really it is. It's getting ridiculous and she can go to fund me sites and everything else. But what probably needs to be done is fund her criminal defense fund because she's got warrants for her arrest and there's an additional possession of controlled substance back in March that is probably going to go to the grand jury where she was in possession of methamphetamines and syringes and everything else. So I could go on, Angel, but I'm sorry. I like it. I think uh, if, if, if we can go back and forth. So Everybody just, uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all very much. It. Appreciate it. Now, um, this is, you know, what this parent is doing is, you know, every child has a fundamental right and need uh, for an unthreatened and loving relationship with both parents. This is my opinion here. And uh, to be denied that right by one parent without sufficient justification, such as abuse or neglect, is in itself a form of child abuse. Now, if you have you seen that he has been cleared, uh, the father has been cleared of all these charges of abuse. That, uh, you know, several judges have found that um, that the claims, those claims by her, could not be be founded. So, therefore, what she is causing now is she's the one that's causing the child abuse uh, to uh, to uh, her daughter, and so it is very important to. Uh, that's why I wanted to cover this here on the on this. Uh, on the be on the lookout, and you can uh, visit uh, Klein in uh, Investigations and Consulting on Facebook at um, www.facebook.com 
Klein Investigations. Okay, we have seemed to uh, lost uh, co-host Jackie. Um, just got off the phone with her. She's going to be getting back in here. So uh, I guess what we'll do is uh, we'll go into a commercial break here and uh, then uh, wait for her to come in and then we'll start with prayer. Um, I'm going to go ahead and actually want to uh, introduce you to uh, a good, fr a good uh, friend of mine. Uh, his uh, daughter is actually uh, starting out in the music industry. Her name is Julie Marie and uh, she's become a hot sensation uh, on uh, YouTube. She's got over 100,000 followers uh, on uh, her YouTube channel, and I don't have that link to me right now. Um, I wasn't planning on this happening here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and try to find that uh, video uh, promoting Julie Marie's uh, music video on YouTube, uh, My Generation. <clears throat> Stay with me one minute here. <clears throat> okay, so here is Julie Murray. And to uh, let the listeners know and YouTube know, I do have the rights to the copyrights to this music video through permission from uh, the record company for Julie Marie and through Envy Entertainment and Pure Rock Media Group. Hello and welcome back everybody. You are listening to Speak Your Mind Radio. You can uh, follow us on Twitter at uh, SYM Radio and you can also follow us on Facebook at SYM Radio Show. Finally, um, what everyone has been waiting for is Generation. Julie's music video on U is on YouTube now. You can uh, watch it, and please subscribe and share it. And I'd like to say a big thanks to Envy Entertainment and the support, support from friends, family, fans, and the team. You can uh, download her uh, single, uh, Generation, on iTunes, or her whole EP, The Movement, also on iTunes, for $2.97. Now, that is very inexpensive. You can also have the option to download Gen Just Generation, which you're going to be hearing, uh, for only $0.99. Cents. So let's go ahead and um, go in to Julie Marie's song, Generation.
Podcaster uses Radio Amber, the Internet Radio Amber Alert System, helping to keep your children safe. A public service from the Internet Broadcasting Community and this station. Okay, we have Jackie back here. Um, sorry about uh, uh, some of the problems here, and sorry about the video skipping. Uh, so I do all know this. I, I need a new computer. And uh, Jackie, you need to unmute your mic, please. Oops. <laughs> that could be a funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Could be a funny. Oh, that's for the blooper beer, right? Yeah, there's a blooper. Can I have a cup of coffee, please? Me too. No. Anyway, um, do you need any? Do you need any prayer requests? Um, yes, actually, um, on that, um, on the that be on the lookout that I pay uh, that I played there earlier uh, on the family. For uh, for uh, Josh. Yeah, it's the same as ours. The Ferguson family in Austin or Texas. Yeah, but it, it is. Yeah, it is no relation to uh, Jackie at all. <laughs> no relation. Different family. Totally different spelling too. So uh, it's not her family. Um, but yeah, I want to I want to pray on that to actually uh, uh, for the mother to uh, turn herself in and to return the child. <laughs> To uh, Child Protective Services, so we can go back to Josh. If we could pray for that. Okay. And um, uh, uh, thanks, thanks and praise. Uh, actually, um, on Saturday there was an Amber Alert out of uh, Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, on uh, Jaden Gilly for in uh, Caleb. Uh, I can't say I pronounce the last name, but it's B O I. Um, it's B R I S B O I S. They were actually found safe yesterday morning um, in Ottawa. So uh, yeah, they they had yep. So that's awesome. They've been abducted on uh, the 14th Saturday Saturday evening. So they were found safe uh, Sunday. Actually, the it was uh, parental abduction. The mother um, had uh, taken them. But she was arrested, so yeah, praise God for that. And uh, um, also, I have a few uh, more. yeah, and prayers for Sue too. Um, Tyler's grandmother's in the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, I see you. I guess she's doing better. A continued uh, prayer for recovery. Um, what does she have? OCD? Did she has COPD? No, I can't. I can't But she had. She had the flu without telling anyone. Emphysema. She has emphysema. Yeah, emphysema. That's that's this. That's the same thing as as COPD. Chronic it's obstructive. Little, it's a little bit worse. Yeah, it's a little and bit worse. Yes, and, it's chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Right. And and my friend, daughter April lives in Savannah, Georgia, and I was talking to her yesterday, and she's having husband issues. Her husband took her kids to Atlanta, and she's really missing them. I mean, she knows where they're at, but she's really missing them. Mm -hmm. So, anyway. So, yeah. Okay. So, let's, let's go ahead and uh, go to prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time that we can 
share together on this podcast, Lord, and hopefully can make a difference with you and with people that would listen to this. And, and Heavenly Father, thank you for Dave. And um, I want to uh, pray for um, Alex and Tiffany and Sarah that you would show yourselves to the three of them and keep them on your path. Yes, Lord. Sent, we're not in a good world. Um, I I stress that that they will fall off of your path, Lord. Um, because they're all really gullible. So just kind of work in their hearts and keep them strong. And um, I want to also pray for um, the Dodie's oldest daughter, Samantha, who has in different ways and separation from her family. Because um, she kind of walked away um, and is doing her own thing. And, uh, and since she's walked away, God, she's been having a lot of challenges. And she's becoming, and I'll use the word that Dave has asked, and she, she's being obstinate. So just kind of be with her and work with her, God. And pray for Alex and Alicia and their temptations that um, they're, they've been tempted a lot lately, and that's not a good thing. So I think uh, they need, may need a, a hedge of thorns around them both. Uh, pray for the Ferguson family in Texas, Lord, that the, the mother will turn herself in and bring the kids back. And just be with that family, Lord. And also be with April. She's going through some trials with her husband, and her husband took her kid, her kids, to Atlanta, and she misses her kids terribly. So I pray that she'll she'll get them back, and pray for Tyler's grandmother, who has the flu. Although she's getting better, it's on top of emphysema. So I pray for continued speedy recovery for her so she can come back home. Thank you for your challenges that make us into better people. Thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you have given me. Thank you, Lord, for bringing Jackie into my life. And yes, of course, being able to do this podcast. Also, Lord, I pray for, for the churches financially and spiritually. Bless our church members. I pray for our church leaders and also for our our soldiers out there and our emergency personnel. Keep them safe today. And uh, we also pray for the families of the missing that you give them the strength and courage to go on. And please, we also pray for uh, for Selena Cass uh, that uh, justice is brought to her family, and that this this person that murdered Selena be brought to justice. And uh, thank you for this beautiful day, Lord. I know it's cold out there. At least you've given us the sun and the blue sky. <laughs> and, uh, Lord, I know this is probably something that um, is your will, but please bring much warmer weather to us and uh, the storms. Deceased them, Lord. Uh, we've had three snowstorms in four weeks, and getting tired of this cold and uh, the snow. So bring us warm weather and bless 
our country, Lord, and God bless you. Thank you. Amen. All right. Um, okay. <laughs> I think uh, what we're going to do here is going to end up at, um, ending here, and then we're going to go ahead and later on, um, because it's getting pressed for time, it's getting 1.30 in the afternoon here, and um, I have things to do. So I think what we're going to do is end the broadcast now, and then um, in a later um, probably tomorrow's broadcast or sometime this week we'll go ahead and play our broadcast that we were supposed to be playing yesterday on Sunday uh, so everybody thanks follow us on Facebook and uh, subscribe to us on YouTube at one God 16 thank you and God bless your day